everyone, and I am Zafia Ding. Hi, my name is Annika Sia or Nika. Hi, my name is Anthony Nicholas. I'm John Sun S. Pickrell. I feel most loved by my mom and dad. Every time they would wake me up every single morning to eat breakfast with them and just ask me how my day was um, the day before. And they will do it consistently because for them, it's their way to make me feel that I'm always seen, heard, and I'm always validated. I feel loved when they are looking for me when I was at home and they waiting for me to come home to eat lunch, dinner, or breakfast. And when they are waking me up to go to school so that I can and so I feel loved by mommy when she listens to me whenever I have problems or when she prays for me, most especially when I go through hard times and I ask her for advices. But I feel loved by my dad when he also comforts me or he jokes around with me. Nah, he tries to cheer me up. I feel most loved by my parents when they say that they love me, that when they say that they're proud of me, and that they that I'm doing a good job as a child. When I become dad, gagayain ba sila papa and mama kung paano nila ako pinilaka and kung paano ako nila nilapit kay God. When I become a mother in the future, I would teach my children to communicate and tell me openly what they are feeling and I would gladly share the word with them. When I become a dad, I will teach my child to walk with the Lord. I will discipline my child with love, with gentleness, and I'll teach them to really walk with the Lord and I'll learn how to work with people and love people and really just have a heart for God. When I become a mom, I will make sure that I am my child's best friend, that I am a safe space for her or him to express his or her faith, to grow his faith with, that I am a safe space for my child's imperfections, that I am a safe space for my child's growth and development, and as well as my child's safe space for him or her to really know God and God's purpose for him. The best thing of being a child of mommy is I really get to relate to her on a spiritual level Now I'm not afraid to tell her the words that I receive or ask her for advice regarding them. For my dad naman, the best thing about him is he's really wise in terms of um, life. He gives me a lot of advices and comfort then coming from a college student. I also came from his school. So he knows a lot. Usually approach him whenever I need advice or opinions and some. I think the best thing of being a child of my mom and dad is that I feel like I have a best friend, two best friends growing up. I feel like it's not scary to open up to them, to be vulnerable with them. It's not scary to really express who I am. And with that, I'm able to really spread out my wings and really find my true potential because I have two best friends who really believe in me. The best thing about being a child of my parents is that I know that they're walking with the Lord. Therefore, I can trust their advice, I can trust their guidance because I know their hearts for the Lord and that when they teach us, when they guide us, that they're never gonna go against what God is instructing to us, what's put into their hearts. And I know, and it's always filled with peace. sa aking mama po and when sinabitan niya po ako ng medal nung with honors po ako I feel proud po kasi po mahirap din po maging with honors lalo na po pag student athlete po and when with my dad po pag minibigyan niya po ako ng advice kung paano yung buhay nila dati na, sa buhay namin ngayon pag kinakumpar niya po yun naawa po ako and I feel loved and gifted po my favorite moment with both mom and dad was siguro yung 18th birthday ko kasi ito sa pandemic and then we couldn't really go out so so they really made the effort to set a mini debut party for me sa loob ng bahay and lahat bongga, lahat ng teams, lahat ng favorite food ko nandun. So, you know, I really appreciate the efforts of my mom and dad during my 18th birthday. So my favorite memory with my dad is when I joined a pageant, my dad just teared up. I was on the stage and I was just looking at my dad and he teared up, he really cried that night and I asked him why and he said, Anak mo, ka na talaga. And for me, that's a sign that my dad really cared for me and nurtured me even, though, even when I was young. So every time I would reach an endeavor, every time I would reach something big, it's really my dad who is getting emotional 
you know, and really celebrating that win. With my mom naman, my mo- most memorable memory with my mom is we would always exchange thoughts and my mom will always hear my ideas and she will always ask me things. For me, that's really my mom trusting me that I have insights and wisdom and I cannot, I can impart to her without looking at me as just a child or just as young as I am. My favorite memory of my mom is whenever we would just talk about the Bible, we would just um, go back and forth, um, not really debates, but really just getting deeper into the Word of God. And then my favorite memory with my dad is really playing catch. It's typical, I guess, American thing, but playing catch with the football, throwing, catching, and just spending time outside. Thank you, Mama and Papa, dahil naniwala kayo from the start. Lalo na nung naging student at nito ako alam kong kailangan pagsabayan dahil ayaw nyo ba ang aka ko. Thank you dahil naniwala kayo from the beginning. Hi, Mommy. Hi, Daddy. Thank you for all the efforts and the advices and all of the moments that you made. It cheered me up, most especially no down na down na ako kung ano ba naman yan. Thank you for always supporting me in everything I do. I pray, I declare that you all may live a prosperous and long life and that we may be able to spend more time together then and I love you both. To my mom and dad, thank you for always trusting me. Thank you for believing in me. Thank you for always cheering me up. Thank you for being God's vessel, God's instrument of love towards me. I will always make you proud, mommy and daddy. I'd just like to say I love you guys. As my parents, thank you for guiding me. Thank you for or I'm raising me as a child and I just wanted you to know that I'm always here. I'm always going to be your child. I love you guys so much and my number one priority is that I want to honor you guys and I want to live this life really honoring the Lord as well. them and say, well, I'm a junior anak ko. However, you see the hearts of these children and you see where they're coming from and you see what touches them and what makes them feel special. Coming from a child na, ano yung pinaka-memorable mo? Yung nag-stay kami sa hotel. Yeah. <laughs> Malamig, you know, to the times that we're talking. You know, see, you see the, the age and how they become mature and what's more important will become different when they mature as well. So I just want you to catch those hearts and see um, maybe the hearts of your children from them as well. So are you ready to continue? Yes! yes. Puling! Sinong busog? Busog. Sinong, <laughs> Sana na busog kayo. Sinong kailang kape? <laughs> Sino inaantok? Wala. Okay. Okay, first of all, I want to ask for your permission. If that's okay, we are starting at 7. Can we end at 8.30? If, if you need to go at 8, I would understand. All you need to do is just stand up and leave the room. <laughs> and I'm okay. And I'm not going to be offended. And when you stand up and leave the room, everybody looked at them. <laughs> and I'm going to mention your name. <laughs> okay. No, no, no. It's okay. Um, we understand because we said we end at 8 o'clock. Um, but I feel like because we started late... <laughs> then we need to kind of move and uh, yeah, move our schedule. Okay, so let's go. We are going to be talking about the final topic, environment, which I believe is, again, very, very important to establish in our children. It's very important. Very but important. Most parents don't even consider this, sec- this section. Yeah, sometimes you overlook this. Sometimes, oh, okay lang yan. But actually, I, I hope after a conversation today, you'll pay more attention. So, um... First of all, in, in, this, in the list is create a culture of blessing. So I just want to say we in Wisdom Church of Manila, we actually put a very big priority on this one. We uh, put a big, big priority on blessing your children and just speaking blessing on a regular basis to your kids. So one of the things that you can use, again, I mentioned now Fetus is a community that we have. We have uploaded prayers there that you can pray one minute very short and just bless your child though it doesn't have that you could just before they leave the house and say i bless you right may the law may the lord bless you and keep you make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you may the lord keep his countenance upon you and give you peace i mean that could be a short prayer of declaration to them but bless Bless, bless, bless. So that's a culture of blessing. We also have what we call Bat Baraka and Bat Barbaraka. It's actually our way of releasing our kids 
from childhood to adulthood. Um, again, if you want to know more about that, you can find out, find out about those things from our website and also from our YouTube and Facebook fan page. Also, during dedication, we start that. You know, baby dedication, we really stress and explain what really a blessing is. There's power to the words that we speak to our children. So we're not limiting those to prayers only, but as we have established, hopefully during our conversations, now every time you speak something, it counts. Every time you open your mouth, it counts. Your kids are like recorders. They are listening to you. They're listening to you. They're recording what you say, and they're learning good or not so good things from you. Job 22, 28, one of my favorite Bible verses, it says, You shall decree, decide first, and then decree a thing, and it shall be established for you, and the light of God's favor shall shine upon your ways. This is so powerful. I mean, understand what this means. You decide. It's kind of like what we're talking about. Decide what you accept and what you don't accept in your family. Decide. Then after you decide, you got to decree. It's got to it's gonna start from your mouth. You got to open your mouth and declare what you want to see. Declare what you accept and what you do not accept in your family. A blessing it always comes out of your mouth. Always comes out of it. It's a spoken favor of God. That's a blessing. And it shall be, the Bible says, after you decide, after you have declared with your mouth, then you will see it established in your life. And that's why, again, the power of declaration, the power of confessing your blessing to your kids because, yes, yeah, ito namang sinasabi ko, parang baliktad sa nakikita ko sa mga anak ko. For now, but wait. These are like seeds that you're planting in the lives of your children. They are seeds that you're planting on a regular basis. Sooner or later, they're going to grow and bring harvest into your family. That's the power of blessing. Can you say something about the blessing? Sure. You know, a blessing that comes from the parent is the most powerful blessing. It yes. doesn't matter if it's what the auntie says. It yes. doesn't matter what the, the Lola, Lola says, says. The Lola says. Before we were Christians, BC, BC. Before Christians. BC. <laughs> Before Christians. We already knew this. And uh, I'm going to use my son, Anthony. My son, Anthony, was uh, playing with a, a toy knife, trying to open um, a box with a toy knife. Mm. And then we were with my parents, my mom. My mom says, Itong si Anthony, pelyo yan eh. Sabi, pelyo. Mm -mm. What does pelyo mean? Naughty. Naughty. Mm -mm. Okay. And then, right then and there. I know she didn't mean it like that, right? Parang joke, 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 joke lang. Yeah. I know it's a joke, but sometimes it starts with a joke. And as most women, most wives say, if the husband says something that's actually hurtful, even if it's a joke, they will kim kim it. Anyway, so anyway, Anthony heard it, and right away, Pastor Celeste corrected my mom. Yeah. Hindi po. Mabait po yan. And guess who was listening? He's playing. He's listening. Antenna's up. The He's antenna, listening. The child's antenna is always up. And guess whose word will supersede? Is it my mom's? Sorry, mommy. <laughs> is it my mom's or is it yours? ours the parents why because you have the authority over your children not the lola has authority over your children not the auntie the cousins has authority over your children you have authority of your children and this is where baby dedication is so important because the ninongs and ninangs you give authority to the ninong and ninang to be speak over, to their, speak lives. over their lives. So this is where you need to be careful that they believe the same thing so that they don't just joke around and say, oh, spill you kasi yung anak mo eh. Mm. Does this make sense? These yeah. are curses. I know. It's, it's, I'm napaka and you have to be very quick to catch those you things. You gotta catch it. Why? Why? Because mm. the enemy is quick. Mm. The enemy can only use words that's released to use it for or against your children, or yes. most likely against, mm. right? So they say, naughty, pilio. Mm. And he said, oh, the parents say pilio. Oh, the Lola says pilio. The parents didn't say anything. And they the parents must, actually just laugh about it. Which is an know? agreement. Guess uh -oh. what the That's demonic fallen angels will do? They'll grab those words. Plant and it in your plant child's, it in heart. child's heart. Why? Because you gave them permission as parents. Mm. You didn't catch it and rebuke it. Mm. Does this make sense, church? This, you have to be diligent with this. 
Yeah, you got to look at words as seeds again. The question is, are you planting good seeds or are you planting bad seeds? Or are you allowing other people around your children to just plant, plant, plant seeds that are not good and you just allow it? So we have to be very careful and we are the agents, God's agents of impartation of blessing to our children. Yes, amen. Because if we don't, question is, who will? Culture. Who will? Your, the teachers are not going to do it. Even the church with the limited access to your kids are not going to be able to do it on a regular basis. You know who's going to determine? Social media, whatever is oh, influencing yeah. your kids right now. Hmm. So be, you, you want your voice. So here's the thing. If, if you can just take this as the main thing learning for you tonight, that would be good. Your goal is to be the loudest voice in your child's life next to God. And that comes with relationship. That comes with trust. That comes with them being, being able to depend on you. That comes with integrity. It comes with a lot of things. But you want your voice, second to God, right, to be the loudest voice and authority in their lives. Because, again, you are speaking their future. Next one, plug into a church family. Hebrews 10, 24 to 25, it says, Let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Now, this is very, this, these verses are very familiar with you guys. Now, I just want to highlight this. And sometimes maybe you don't see the value of a church. Who here wants to have kids going to church on a regular basis? What do we need to do as parents? <laughs> yes, galing. We've learned something. We got to show them that we also are going to church. Who here wants to see kids serving the Lord? What do you need to do? We got to serve the Lord. And again, it doesn't matter what local church you're with, right? But plug into a local church. Make a decision. What, what church? <laughs> it's, it's an option. But I'm saying plug into a church. Look at the anointing of the church. When you see and you like anointing, then go under that church. Because anointing flows, right? Anointing flows. Plug into that church. I'm still on. Every church Plug has an anointing. Yes. If you go to a church, you'll, under, you'll know right away what the anointing of the church is. And if it's not the anointing that you need as a family in that season, maybe grace says, God's grace says, that's not where you're supposed to be in that season. And it's okay. And it's okay. You go where grace goes. Yeah. You don't go to that church because my friend goes there. My parents goes there. You go to that church because the Holy Spirit is directing you and leading you to that church because they know that's your place of equipping in this season. There I go. So that's another thing. Who here wants your children to be empowered and equipped to do their purpose in their lives? Church, at least I know, Wisdom Church of Manila that is one of the roles that we take very, very seriously. It is for their empowering. It is for their equipping. That's one of the purposes of being plugged into a church. Now, you want your kids to do that, then you got to be the example too. Right? But that's... And also, last one. Last, why do I need to go to church? And why do I need to bring my kids to church? You want to surround your kids with people who are overflowing. With the love of God, overflowing with the revelation of God, overflowing with the Spirit of God. Where else would you take your kids? Because the thing is, and I think it's, it's very, it's connected to another point that I have, but bottom line, your kids will receive overflow from other people. Whether you like it or not, and we're talking about environment, right? Lahat ng taong nakapaligid sa mga anak mo, spiritually, 
Kahit walang physical contact yan, there is a spiritual impartation to your children. Yes. Question here is, what kind of impartation are they getting? What kind of overflow are they receiving? What kind of overflow? Is it overflow from the, from the world or overflow from God? Can you say a story real quick? Yes. I don't know why it came to my mind. So uh, one of our sons, I forgot who. Actually, I probably know who. But anyway, one of our sons yes. actually approached uh, one of the people in MOH, and he was asking them for advice, okay? Yeah. Which is good because they're, they're, they're the leaders of our church, right? And he was asking for advice. And then the, this person says, uh, Alam mo naman na yung, ano, eh, I guess in Tagalog, alam mo na yung sagot. Lahat ng sasabihin ko sa iyo, natutu, natutunan, natutunan ko rin. sa mga parents mo. So the thing is, it's so good. Cool to see. Cool is that the word is used? Yeah, it's so cool to see that what we are teaching and imparting is coming around mm. and it's actually going back to our children. And guess what? When you serve, when you're actually here in, the, in, in our church, your children will probably be taught by other people, your friends here in church, listening to the same thing, yes. uh, uh, receiving the same impartation, the same anointing. Mm. That's the importance of being in the right church it doesn't yeah. matter what church it is but you have to understand the anointing of the church does this make sense yeah that's the beauty of the church because sometimes the people that you're ministering to right now in this season sooner or later these same people will be the ones ministering, ministering to, to your, your kids children. ministering to your family members Right? In a different way, a lot of times people will impact your children differently from how you impact them. And that's good. That's okay. But again, we need to place them in the right environment. So again, I'm not just saying Wisdom Church of Manila lang. But you know, if you have a church and you're considering a local church, decide and plug into that church. And you know, do your part and teach your kids by example, by modeling. Okay, next one. Kick out strife. I think we talked about strife, um, kanina. So I am. Not, I'm not gonna be okay. I'm not gonna be um, expanding on this. But I want to discuss Hebrews 12:15 yeah. to 17. I'm gonna give you another reason why you want to kick out strife in your family. It says, exercise foresight and be on the watch to look, to see that no one falls back from and fails to secure God's grace. Okay, it says here that you need to watch, watch out, right? That no one falls back from and fails to secure God's grace. How do you fall? How do you fail to secure God's grace? It says, in order that no root of resentment, rancor, bitterness, or hatred shoots forth and causes trouble and bitter torment, and the many become contaminated and defiled by. It. Bottom line, what this is talking about, it's talking about a defiled heart. When you harbor resentment, bitterness, unforgiveness. unforgiveness, all of these things that are in your heart, anger, right? Resentment against other people. These things will defile your heart, the Bible says. And when it defiles your heart, what did it say? you will fall back and fail to secure the grace of God, His unmerited favor and spiritual blessing. Now you see, as parents, especially with kids that are younger, you make the decision on this one. You make the decision if your entire family is receiving the blessing or not. Am I harboring something in my heart that's not supposed to be there? And the Bible says if you do, you may fail to receive His unmerited favor and blessing. And that's why, again, it, we, we need to be very quick to recognize, you know what, this is not good. I have unforgiveness. I'm bitter. I'm angry. I'm, I, have offense. Yeah, I have offense. I got offended at church today. If you get offended... Deal with it right away because you don't want to bring that in your home, right? You don't want to bring that to your kids. Um, okay, next one, Proverbs 10, 12, it says, Hatred stirs up strife, but love covers all sin. And it's so good because it's so connected to what we talked about um, this afternoon in 1 Peter 4, 8. 
Love covers all sins. Repeated. And then I'm not going to expand on that. Let me move on. Do not provoke your children. Again, talking about us irritating, exasperating our kids. And I think we have highlighted this enough today. You want to add something more? Here. Tech, tech, tech. Tech, yeah. tech. Oh, it's like <laughs> working again. All right. Now, I wanted to go to the message version of uh, this Colossians 3.21. says, Parents, do not come down too hard on your children, or you'll crush, crush their, their spirits. spirits. Yes. I think that's a word for some of you today. Yeah. Not too hard. Are you done? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let's talk about one very important thing. Apologize to your children. I know this is counterculture because in our culture as Filipinos, tatay ako. Silang dapat na magsorry sa akin. Akong tama. Whether you are correct or not, Right? Dapat sila yung mag-apologize. No. Doesn't work that way in the kingdom. Parents, you need to learn and be willing to apologize when you're wrong. And this is... This is a spirit of pride, by the way, especially to fathers. Who has a strong father figure in their family? Strong father figure? Yeah. I mean, this Our is dad, hard. Uh, this is hard. Because I'm the authority, I'm the tatay, akong, akong masusunod. It's Oo. pride. It's Sumunod actually ka pride. lang, akong tatay dito. Yeah. But that's, that's how, it's, how it's supposed to be. Remember we were talking about integrity? And what happens if you fall out of integrity? Hindi naman tayo perfect. I understand. Right? When and if we fall out of integrity, meron kang ginawa na tinuturo mo sa anak mo, pero ikaw rin pala yung gumagawa ng mali. Right? And if that happens, listen, be willing to apologize. How does apologize look like? And how can you do apologies? The, the proper way, at least what I would suggest, you say, anak, I'm sorry. And it doesn't end there. Listen, it doesn't end there. It doesn't end with saying, I'm sorry. Hello. Okay. You need to say, I'm sorry. And you say, plus... I'm sorry for, can we go again? Okay. I'm sorry for yelling at you today. Anak, I'm sorry I said, wag magsisinungaling, tapos nakita mo kung magsinungaling today. Anak, I'm sorry for, say what happened, say what you're apologizing for. That's the first one. And you can say, anak, I'm, so, I'm sorry, and say the desire that you don't want to do it anymore. I'm sorry napalo kita, pero galit ako. Why are you laughing? <laughs> no, because this is actually for husband and wives as well. Because the husband keeps on saying, I'm But sorry. To sa husband I'm sorry. Wife, no? say, sorry ka ng sorry. Anong pinagsasorry mo? Oh, you gotta say what you're sorry for. <laughs> Wala lang. Gusto ko lang matapos tong away. I'm sorry. <laughs> But you Can gotta I say... relate, husbands? <laughs> But you gotta say what you're sorry <laughs> for. Because kids can learn from you. Kids can learn from you. And also, I'm sorry, and then the desire to change. I'm sorry, anak, napagalitan kita out of anger, hindi na yun mauulit. Your desire to change. And then, of course, lastly, I'm sorry, important. Will you? Anak, will you forgive me? This is so... If Husbands, highlight that. This formula... Circle it, highlight Highlight it, it works. <laughs> I've used it so many times with Pastor Selassie, honey... <laughs> Will, 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 you, you, for, will you forgive me? Uh. And she can't say no. <laughs> <laughs> It works. And your kids won't say no either. Yes, your kids and, won't say no. But it's true, right? And of course, be sincere about it. But listen. I am sincere about it. Yeah, you, you need to ask that question. Will you forgive me? And you know, with this, you are apologizing and your heart is blessed. And also your child's heart is blessed by releasing, learning how to release yeah. forgiveness. Yeah. You're learning how to ask for forgiveness, your but your children are learning how, how to, to release, release forgiveness. forgiveness because later on in life, they need to learn how to release forgiveness. Very key. But listen, this, this is so key. And, and listen, sabi nga ni Pastor Riz, 
Maybe one of the exercises you can do tonight when you go home is pray and ask the Holy Spirit, Lord, ano ba yung mga nagawa ko na kailangan kong hinga ng, kailangan kong i-apologize sa anak ko. And you know what? It doesn't matter if it happened 10 years ago. It doesn't matter if your kid, your son already has children. Oh, I forgot to upload one of the testimonies. That there's this testimony of uh, Jervy. I'm just going to tell you the, the quick yeah, story. Just say the story. <laughs> but bottom, bottom line, um, growing up, Jervy had uh, a painful uh, encounter with his father. And so, nagkaroon siya ng tanim sa heart niya of anger against his father. And he even said bad words against his dad growing up. And so later on, of course, coming here and learning all of these things from the Word of God, he realized he's wrong. So he went and actually, ano na siya, may pamilya na siya, may dalawa ng anak, right? And the son, Jervy, went to the province and apologized to the dad. And at that time, the dad was actually sick. You know, um, nakita nila sa medical uh, report na everything was like not normal, right? And so he apologized to the dad, and the dad also apologized to him. So pareho silang nag-release ng forgiveness. So there was forgiveness in that. And of course, they were able to restore something that wasn't there before. Again, it doesn't matter kung gano'n nakatanda o gano'n nakatagal yung nangyari, right? But they did. They were able to restore their relationship. And you know what? They did the test again for the dad's sickness. Everything came out normal. Wow. Can you believe that? So good. And thank you, Jesus. But it, it's one of the most, most powerful things that we can do when we release forgiveness and we also ask forgiveness. It's not only relationship. It's the body. It's the health. It's the finances. You believe it or not, it affects your finances yeah. when you have this heaviness in your heart. For some reason, unforgiveness affects your body. It's actually the, one of the top threes when it comes to deliverance. Unforgiveness is one of the yes. toughest spirit to cast out. For some reason, people hold on one to this. One of the un common, actually. Unforgiveness, yeah. and they don't understand what it's doing, what yes. legal right you're giving the enemy. So, um, yeah, if that could be the only thing you could do, pray and ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, what do I need to ask... Um, sorry for from my children and maybe you are also a child right now and maybe there is something that you need to ask forgiveness from your parents from as well you know ask the holy spirit and that will release not just you but your parents from the bondage of sin from the bondage of sickness from the bondage of financial uh, instability okay the next one use the power of the pause Proverbs 15, 18, it says, A hot-tempered man stir up strife, but he who is slow to anger appeases contention. What is the power of the pause? Before you speak, maybe count 10 seconds. 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000. Alam ko, gigil na gigil ka na magsalita. Limbawa, yung anak mo, sabi mo, dapat 10 o'clock na sa bahay ka na, alas 12 na, hindi pa tumatawag, hindi pa, hindi pa nagme-message, you don't know where your son is. And then he came rushing in on the door, 12.30 p.m., and you're sitting in the living room. What are you going to do? A.M. <laughs> A.M., and what are you going to do? One, one thousand, two, one thousand. That's when you do this, the power of the pause. And while you are at pause, you ask the Holy Spirit, Lord... What do you want me to say? Lord, what do you want me to do and to say? How do you want me to handle this with my son? Use that. You would say 10 seconds. Make si lang No, actually, in those moments, 10 seconds is a lot. Paggigil na gigil ka na, 10 seconds is a lot. And you can also ask the Holy Spirit, it's, it's this there, what do I need to say to correct my child or to encourage my child, depending on the situation? This yes. also applies to you wives when your husband <laughs> comes in Lagi, and gigil na marriage. gigil ka, one, one thousand, two, one thousand. <laughs> <laughs> hindi to marriage conference. But it's so applicable. They say sometimes the husband is the additional child, right, in the family. 
Oh, yeah. yeah. Pinapangatawanan niya yan. Ayan. Anyway, cancel that. Anyway, okay, next. Seven, which is actually one of the big things here. Watch for influences and authority in their lives. I'm going to read to you a few verses. It says, Proverbs 13.20, He who walks with wise men, if you walk with wise men, you will be wise. But the companion of fools will be destroyed. Proverbs 12.26, The righteous should choose his friends carefully. For the way of the wicked leads them astray. 1 Corinthians 15.33, it says, Do not be so deceived and misled. Evil companionships, communion, associations, corrupt and deprave good manners and morals and character. So this, with, I mean, there's more actually. I, I limited it to three Bible verses, but listen. This shows you the importance of you watching the influences, not just you, but influences around your children, starting with friends, organizations that they join, people that they hang out with, people that they go out on trips. All of these things matter a lot. I believe this is one of the areas that we, or you excel at actually. <laughs> I do. That because when, the, when our boys were younger, uh, Pastor Celeste will, will not let our boys go to other people's homes if she does not know the yes, parents know of that. that other child. And I would take the time to befriend the parents. You know, you know sometimes hindi mo naman gusto talaga. Pero, and you know, I know you're busy, but I do that because you need to take the time to understand the family of your kids' friends. And do that again. That's our responsibility. Investigate. If you don't want to do that, then have your kids hang out in your home. Yeah, most of the time they just hang yeah. out in our home. At least you can see what they're doing. You can you see their activities. You control what they're gonna be doing. You control what they'll be watching. Yes. It may be more inconvenient, more expensive because now you have to feed everybody. But still, that's part of controlling the environment. Oh yeah. We have a lot of friends come to our house. Lots of and friends. And we feed them. <laughs> but we'd rather do that. And at least we see them and they say, and then sometimes, I don't know if you remember, I would sometimes say, unlock your friend. And I would say the name. Is he nice? You know, I would just ask questions because I would see from how they play and how the, the child talks, right? Is he nice? You know, and I would eventually, the purpose is for them to, to teach them to choose their friends, to make sure that they're not welcoming people that are not nice. I don't, I don't, not nice. Okay, <laughs> that's the word. Um, in, in their regular circle. And I would also explain, if, if a boy is not nice to them, just understand maybe they have also issues or problems in their families. Mm -hmm. So don't take it personally. It's not against you. So you try to just explain what is going on. But see, that conversation doesn't happen and doesn't start if you don't know who your, your children are exposed to. So you need to know their friends. And I hope I have established that. Um, Up to what age? Up to what age? In every season, right, Anak? <laughs> Hanggang ngayon, <laughs> their friends oh, come over their house. Oh, bring them here. I want to meet them. Bring them yeah. here. Let's have dinner. Let's have lunch. Bring them here. Mm -hmm. And again, it, yeah, you want to get to know them. And you want to know, again, the influences around your kids. Cheer, uh, school, friends, you know, church, by, by authorities. The, if, they, if you train them this way when they were young, by the time they're older, you trust them. They, they know the difference between right and wrong, who to hang out with, who not to hang out with. It's, you know, it feels like a lot of work, but I'll tell you from experience, it actually makes it easier later. When they grow up. I keep on hearing stories of problems with teenagers and all young adults. We've never had those problems because of all of this that was established when they were young. And we trust that they have the judgment. Why? Because we raised them. Remember when I said that you need to make sure that your voice is the loudest voice in your child's life. You need to be able to establish that, of course, second to the Lord, right? Because when they're grown, when they're grown up, and they have their own friends, they have their own circle of influences in their lives, 
you still want to have that privilege, that position to speak over their lives. And if you see something is wrong and you feel something is wrong and the Holy Spirit is telling you already something is wrong, you need to be able to sit down with your child and say, Anak, that person that you are going out with, that person that you're spending so much more time with, can you not, can you stop that friendship right now? Because I feel like there's something there. Without any question, your child should have that attitude of, okay, I may not understand what my mom or what my dad is saying, but I will obey because I know that they're here to protect me. I know na wala silang sasabihin sa akin na hindi para sa ikakabuti ko. That that's why that voice needs to and that's why the trust needs to be established as well. That's a privilege. And don't overuse or abuse that privilege. Right? You only use it when you know it matters, when you know it counts, when you know if this relationship is going to continue on, it's going to change and lead my son into a different direction in life that I don't like. Then use that privilege. Again, as we always say, anak, he, we're not going to say anything. We're going to give you freedom. But if we know that it's a life-changing event, we need to be able to step in. It's turning on and off. Maybe it's a battery. I don't know. But okay. Yeah. And even our wireless. Our okay. wireless. Yeah, yes. Okay, good. Tech, tech, wake up, wake up. <laughs> Kape kayo. <laughs> Game. <laughs> No, this is actually mm -hmm. something that we've established in our home. Yeah. Our children have a lot of freedom. They do have a lot of freedom because of the way we raise them and we trust that they have their judgment. However, if it is a life-changing decision that could ultimately change the course and the direction of their life, for the worse, we will step in. And they understand that. And there's yes. no ifs, ands, or buts. Especially when mommy and I are in agreement. I had moments when, and um, by the way, we have a current series in Wisdom Church of Manila, hearing, hearing the voice uh, of God. And, and really, you know, I have those moments when I just wake up early in the morning and I have a message from God. It's either regarding my children, regarding church, regarding ourselves, but there's always, and you need to be very in tune. And sometimes, see, here's the thing, your obedience to the Lord, because a lot of times the Lord will tell me something and I don't understand why. I don't have a logical reason why the Lord is telling me this, but my job is just to obey. And your children's heart need to have that kind of um, heart as well, right? That when you say something, even though they don't understand fully, that they will obey because they understand that you love them and you care for them. Hmm. So I'm, I'm going to read, I'm just going to jump to Psalm 101, verse 3. It says, I will set nothing wicked before my eyes. I hate the work of those who fall away. I shall not, it shall not cling to me. Do not look at evil or wicked things. Why? Because the Bible says it will get a hold of you. It will cling to you. It will stick to you. So how do you get a hold of things? By using your eyes. By watching things. Shows, movies, even music that they listen to. These are the influences that we're talking about. So we're not just limited to people now, but we're also talking about music, entertainment. Games. Games, shows. Right? These are slowly changing the mindsets of your kids. And it says, it will sooner or later get a hold of you. It'll cling to you. Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's how we build our faith, by hearing. And guess what? That's how fear is also built in the hearts of your children, nice. by them listening and listening and listening to something that's from the world. Yes. Yeah, I'd like to say something about uh, looking at evil things, wicked things. Yes. Uh, part of it is a pornography. What we use yeah. in our family is accountable to you. Accountable, the number two, you.com. 
I know it costs money, but however, it protects the children. It actually warns us when, pe when, uh, when they're watching certain things. Anyway, yeah. I'm going to tell a story because maybe it's something uh, that you don't know. For example, uh, one of my boys, when they used to go to school, right, our, our software caught them watching at something nudity, female nudity. Okay, this was one of our boys. And of course, uh, that's the job of, that's my job. When we caught it, she says, I'm, I'll take care of it. So I brought one of the boys in and I told them, what, what is this? You know, don't get so mad. Okay, it's not your son that you're Influence. mad at. Influence. It's the influence. Mm. It's whatever demonic influence is starting to trying to infiltrate, okay? Yeah. So anyway, so what was this? And then I asked explain, to, to explain. And he said that in school that they were, this was a long time ago, in school, uh, one of the classmates was showing this computer, site, a computer, uh, and then because of that, he was curious as well. Now, so now I know how the enemy is using his classmate to infiltrate his mind. My job as a father is to catch the enemy, mm. not to get mad at my son. Yeah. I know my son's identity, but the enemy is trying to come in. Mm. This is the difference, if you know the, the, the difference between identity and behavior. behavior. We're stopping the behavior. You are correcting the behavior. So what I did was that I explained what the enemy is trying to do. I explained how it affects, how I explain what it can lead to, etc. And once he has understood, it was my job as a parent to start, you know, pray. And then cast out that spirit, that spirit of nudity, uh, sexual, uh, sexual uh, immoral, immorality, pornography. Get out in the name of Jesus. I know what you're trying to do. I count you right now. I'm speaking to the spirit. Yeah. Get out. You don't belong here. Ministering angels, my family ministering angels, get these demons out. They have no effect to my children. Yes. Starting with this children and any part of my family. In yeah. Jesus' name. Mm. Get out. I am the authority. So I establish my, I'm the authority in this family. Yes. I can cast out demons because I'm a believer. Everything you know about your identity. Then kick the demon out and then seal it with the blood of Jesus Christ. Does this make sense, fathers? Yes. Only you can do that. But not if you're like... Eh, That's why we need to be very vigilant. Yes. Right? And Does this help? I, I mean, because I'm just relating experience from my own sons. I, I just have to say this, and I don't know if my kids know about this, but in, in our home, we, we have chosen the biggest room in the house, big, oh, biggest yeah. bedroom in the house. And we have uh, done this intentionally. And this we is have, environment as well. We have <laughs> placed them all there in one room, all three of them in one room. Instead of having their own bedrooms, that's very private, you know, you don't want to give that too much privacy. So they're in this one big room with their beds so and we, their computer. We, we, took, we took the, the master bedroom, which is the biggest, and we sinik stick namin sila tablo dun. Very intentionally. Space, but, and then whenever they move around their stuff, I would say, okay, where are you placing your mind? Monitor. Where are you placing your monitor? I would ask, where are you placing your monitor? Why? Because you want to be able to come in into the room and, and be, be able, able to, to see, see what, what they're, they're looking watching. at. This is the controlling of their environment. Part of it. But listen, understand, when they grow up, you won't be able to control everything. But this is where hopefully the, the, you bring them to church, them listening to the word, that it actually gives them that filter in their heart to know what is right and what is wrong. To make their own decision and say, you know what, this is not good for me. I'm going to not look at this. So it's, it's, it's all of those things working together. All of those things that you need to establish. How's everybody? Good? Good. Good. <laughs> Let's talk about application now. We're doing application and then some videos and, and then we're done. Okay, so we talked about the blessing cards, the barbaraka, barbaraka, child dedication. Protect your children from wrong influences. Again, get to know their friends, get to know their circles. <laughs> Be part of their circles. You know, sometimes I know, sometimes I look like I'm too OA, but I'm becoming their friends. You know, sometimes I would add them to my Facebook, and they'd probably be weirded with, with that and say, well, why is your mom adding me to her Facebook? But, you know, I do mom that. Is, mom is uh, <laughs> nakikialam, nakikialam. but, you know, I'd rather do that. <laughs> uh, here's a question. I'm not saying yo, no or yes to this. Sleep over or not is a question. You know, I, I know sometimes when they become teenagers and say, mommy, can I sleep over with my friend? That, 
this friend, right? And again, it's up to you. If you trust the friend, it's up to you. <laughs> um, but I'd rather have the kids sleep over in my house, right? Um, but if you know the friends, then again, pray about the it. This environment. So instead of our boys sleeping over someone's house, actually all their friends sleeping over our house. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's one. And then the fruit of your mouth, I, I added there, is actually a booklet that we do in Wisdom Church of Manila. If you want to establish that, that um, habit of blessing, of declaration, uh, get the booklet. It's downstairs. Ask the, one of us here uh, for the booklet. And then understand the anointing of your church. It's there, again, to establish your family in a church. Understand the anointing. Online protection apps, we talked about accountable to you software. And then, of course, you got to make sure the shows, the movies, the games that they play, especially games, no witchcraft, no worldly agenda. Can anyway, I think else? I'm done. Yes. One, one, one last thing. Like One of the things that Pastor Salas and I did was very intentional, was to establish our business at home. Oh, yeah. And that was one real important decision. And the reason being because we want to we want to establish where the children always sees mommy and daddy at home. Yeah. They always feel secure. Whenever their friends come, their friend says, Don't your parents work? What did they Don't do they at home work? all day? We right? work. <laughs> it was not because it was done that way, like yes. overnight. It was very intentional. So they always see us at home. They always see mommy at home. They always see daddy at home. They see what we do. And I think that actually establishes security in their life. That the parents yeah, are and, always and, home. And again, you could say, well, hindi pa naman namin kaya yan. But that's fine. But that's maybe fine. you could say five years from now, yeah, ten you gotta years make from plans now, set a for goal. It. You got to make plans for it. Not just, ah, hindi namin kaya, hindi pwede yan sa trabaho ka. No. You just have to plan it because it didn't become overnight for us as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think we're done. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to show you a video of this family that grew in Wisdom Church, Al Manila, because we are talking about having a local church, right? And I just wanted to show the, you this fun video from a family in Wisdom Church, Al Manila. Can we play that, please? Isang umpisa niyan, si Lejan. Si Lejan ang, ang nag-encourage sa amin mag-join ng Wisdom Church. Yung kaganda ng mga video, yung mga sinasabi ni Pastora, talaga naman makaka-encourage. So we tried na mag-join sa Wisdom Church. And that made us history na dito na talaga pumunta sa mag-attend sa Wisdom Church. Nakaka-encourage talaga. May mga, may mga teachings na talaga lagi kang sa pool. Lagi kang sa pool. Bug-bug na nga ako sa teaching. Pero ang sarap, di ba? <laughs> ang sarap, ang sakit na, ang sakit na, <laughs> ang sakit na lang itong mag- patay na lahat yung kuku ko. <laughs> patay na lahat yung kuku ko, pero ang galing naman ni Pastora. Talaga ipapag-pray naman yung, yung ano, yung, ba, mabibigyan ka pa ng wisdom. Tapos, yun, pwede ka rin, ano, mag, siguro kung may hihingi ng prayer sa'yo, maia-apply mo yung natutunan mo, maia-apply mo yung kung ba't naapakin yung kuku mo, maia-apply mo lahat yung mga natutunan dito sa Wisdom Church. And so, The rest was history. And dito na kami from the very first day na na-ordain si La Pastora. And dito rin kami hanggang nag one year anniversary. And we enjoy talaga being volunteers sa lahat ng mga gawain. Um, masarap na nag-ililingkod kay Lord. Hindi kami napapagod. Yes, kahit umuulan. Ang galing sa shuttle. Kahit uh, pagod na pagod. Ikot na ikot sa kalo- kaloob-looban ng ano, na mga nangyayari sa church. Kahit sa mga... Ito mga pamaking ko. Oh, Tingnan mo, nandito na sila lahat. Ah? Yes, pati ang, ano, ang mga logistics. Yes! Magaling magbubuhat ng mga magbibigat ah, na mga bubuhatin. And thank you, Pastora. Thank you, Pastoris. Kasi ang sarap na ang sarap na mga pinararamdam nyo rin sa amin. You are a family talaga. Hindi basta-basta Pastora lang. Hindi basta-basta Pastors lang. Lahat ng mga, mga pinagdadaanan din namin sa buhay. Kasama namin kayo. Thank you, thank you. Uh, kayo naman. Magsulta naman kayo. Ano, uh, what I... What I really want sa wisdom is yung ano equipping. So para less na yung work ko, sinama ko na silang lahat. 
<laughs> I love Wisdom Church so I can learn about God's abundant life, wisdom, and how good God is. Um, yung pag sa Wisdom Church, uh, masasabi ko na hinahanap-hanap namin siya. Hindi lang kami, ano, naging attendee, naging part kami ng Wisdom Church. Kasi from the very beginning na na-enjoy namin, na-enjoy namin and sobrang naging malinaw sa amin kung ano yung abundance life na naka- naghihintay pala para sa amin. Wisdom Church of Manila! I saw the Pickerel family grow in this church. Yeah. And that's like one testimony because they were uh, kalat, kalat sila kalat, kalat sila, some believers, some unbelievers, they're all different locations, all they're doing different things. And then all of a sudden their faith grew. And now they speak the same language, they believe the same thing, and they could see how the Lord is working in every area of their life. Isn't that Man. good? Very good. good. Great. So uh, we're going to actually, uh, this next part actually is uh, we're going to take up an offering. Hmm. Why do we take up an offering? Because it is actually your opportunity. How many here are blessed by the teachings of this church tonight with this conference? Yeah. As you can see for uh, how much did we charge this time? $199? 199 199 Yeah, tusok, tusok. <laughs> yeah, the uh, meal, you had a booklet, you have a pen, you have all this. <laughs> As you can see, this doesn't make sense, right? With all the expense of the church. And the reason we do this is because we have so many uh, faithful, faithful stewards of their money when they're directed by the Holy Spirit. They actually <laughs> They, they invest in this church, and our job is to invest it back into your lives. Yeah. Right? And we want mm-hmm. to give you an opportunity. Can I take this verse here? So seeds. It says here in Galatians 6.6, 6, I had actually one of the, one of these were one of the verses, very first verses that was taught to me by our spiritual father, Dr. Nasser Siddiqui. And it was actually, I, I taught on this, and it was actually a very offensive message to me at the time. <laughs> <laughs> but... The Lord just revealed something in my heart that, you know what, according to Galatians 6, 6, the one who has taught the word of God is to share all good things with the teacher contributing spiritual and material support. In this case, it is where you're fed the word of God. Sometimes it's the church. Sometimes it's in ministry. However, when it comes to an offering, it's always, always led by the Holy Spirit, mm-hmm. not force. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 9, 7. A lot of people think this is a tithing verse. No, no, no. It's actually an offering verse because in the first part, first chapter, uh, Paul says, now let's talk about the offering. So we'll go to 2 Corinthians 9, 7. It says, let each one, this is the heart of the Lord, give as he has made up in his own mind and purpose in his heart. Not reluctantly or sorrowfully or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful, joyous, prompt to do it, giver. Say joyous. Joyous. Say prompt to do it. Prompt to do it. You know, delayed obedience is disobedience. If you are blessed by the word, you should sow into the anointing that fed you as led by the Holy Spirit. And God has a promise. You know, God has a promise. For those who sow seeds according to leading's instruction. Take a look. Next verse. So next verse says, And God who provides seed for the sower. God does not provide seed for every Christian. He only provides seeds to sowers and bread for eating. This is his promise. He provides seed for you and to sow it directly as he instructed so that he will also provide Multiple, multiply your resources for sowing. A lot of times people don't understand how the Lord works. These are kingdom principles of financial increase. Yes. Kingdom principles when it comes to stewarding money. God does not just throw money at you. He actually multiplies your resources. Sometimes it's a new job. Sometimes it's a new business. Sometimes it's actually a, a promotion, Gift. right? An idea, an investment that actually grows so that it can increase in fruits of your righteousness. Does this make sense, church? Yes. So right now, this is an opportunity for you to practice hearing directly from the Holy Spirit and obeying his uh, instructions. Uh, oh, ushers, can you pass out envelopes, please? That's the name of ushers. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
<laughs> yes, please pass out the envelopes. Again, this is not forced, okay? This is, uh, do, do not dishonor the Lord by saying, ah, ko no, 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 no. The, the Lord uh, will, will provide. They provide for you. The Lord provides for our church over and above and beyond. Yeah. Why? Because that is our good, good Father. Yeah. In the kingdom, there are four steps. How many? Four. Four. Four steps to receiving your harvest. First, you have to identify the harvest. This is sowing and reaping. When you reap, you reap a harvest. But how do you know what to sow if you don't know the harvest? So what is it right now that the Lord has placed in your heart? One of the things I want you to write down right now, everybody. You want the harvest of blessings that is due to your children. The inheritance Amen. that is promised to your children. Amen. That is what you want. By learning what you learned tonight, by the impartation of God's Word and the revelation from the Holy Spirit, God will work through you to bless your children. Amen. One of the things you want is a harvest of blessings to your children. Write it down. This is what this conference is yes. about. And then whatever else that the Lord has placed in your heart. Yes. The harvest of blessings. Spiritual blessings divine health, a long life, doing well in every, every area of their lives, blessing the work of their hands, financial prosperity, sozo, everything, salvation of their families, families in the future, and for their children. Number two, ask the Lord right now, place your hand in your heart and ask the Lord, what is the right measure of seed? for the harvest that I'm asking for, for the blessings for my children, for them to follow you, Lord, for you to bless everything that they do so that others, that they can be a testimony to others because of all the goodness in their lives. Yes. What is the measure of seed? Be careful not to let the enemy steal this word for your harvest. Listen to the Holy Spirit. It's going to be a direct instruction. Number three, you obey the Holy Spirit. Joyous, prompt to do it, giver is what the Lord says. So whatever the Holy Spirit says, you know what? It's his money anyway. And you, you, you will bless. Uh, it's a seed for your children's future. This is what we're claiming for your children's future, their blessings. That is what we're claiming for as the harvest. And if you're watching this online or in a, in a recording later, if you are led by the Holy Spirit, there's actually a, can you show the, the, the ways to, to uh, give an offering to this church? By the way, in this section over here, it says others, offering. Just put the offering, just say, train them up, conference, so that we know we can actually steward this, that the finance is coming. We know that this is actually coming in for the, for the conference, from the conference. And when you're ready, ushers, can you pass the basket? You sow your seeds. So how do you sow seeds, right? Push, pass, the, pass the basket, please. You don't throw. It's an offering. Say, Lord, I thank you. Thank you for directing me. I thank you that you are going to grow this seed for my children's future. Yes. I thank you, Lord, Amen. for the blessing. I got it in Jesus' name. I yes. rebuke the enemies trying to steal this seed right now yes. in Jesus' name. Go, yes. holy angels. By the way, reaping the harvest, you send your angels out and then you use the sickle, which is your mouth, and say, grow right now. Holy angels, bring this harvest in, in Jesus' name. Jesus name. These are all the things that we teach in church, right? Another way to do it is say, Lord, thank you, I got it, in Jesus' name. Yes. Faith is believing. Right? Believing, right? Believed. No, my gosh. Faith is believed. Duh. It's believed. actually past tense. You believed what Jesus did on the cross. It is already done. Therefore, when you sow your seed, thank you, Lord, I got it. This is my faith. I got it, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Right? Inaantok na sila. 
Did you enjoy the conference? Yeah. Great. We're going to we have Q&A. We're, we're going to do Q&A. We have a few questions. Sometimes it's actually very, very impromptu. And then we'll, uh, we'll do that part. If you're ready, can you come down here and I can pray? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for this conference. I thank you, Lord, for the impartation of your knowledge and wisdom. Everybody, can you extend your hands in, uh, thank you, Lord. in faith? Matthew 18, 19 says again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father, which is in heaven. Lord yes. God, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for your spirit-led offering. Yes, we Lord. honor you with this offering, Lord. Yes, Lord. Right now, we, we, we claim the 30. We claim the 60. We yes, claim Lord. the hundredfold harvest Amen. for our children, for their blessings, for yes. their families in the future. Protect yes, them, Lord. Lord, from any schemes of the enemy yes, right Lord. now. Go, holy angels. Bring in the harvest. Give us divine instructions, yes, Holy Lord. Spirit, and what to do next for yes. our children, with our children, yes. so that to be established your heart, Lord. Yes, Lord. that they know that you're loved father and let that love through flow through us as parents in jesus name we pray amen, amen and, and amen, amen.